In this lecture presented by www.free-academy.com, we're going to start uh, explaining related rates. Now, related rates is an application of implicit differentiation, so there isn't any good way for me to say this is how you do a related rate problem. The best way to learn these is by example, so that's exactly what we're going to do here. We've been given a cone. Its radius is 20 feet and its height is 10 feet and it's filling with water at the rate of 2 cubic feet per second. So let's say that this is like a swimming pool or something like that. And we want to find how high, how fast is the water rising in this pool at any given time. This is a related rates problem. So the way we go about this is we write, we start out by writing all the equations we know. And we know that the volume for the cone is equal to pi over 3 r squared times height. Then we also know that uh, we have an equation relating the height and the radius and that the radius is equal to 2 times the height. This is because the radius at the base is 20 feet and the height is 10 feet. And because this is a straight line, we come up with this. So we know a couple things about it. What do we do now? Well, we're looking for how much the volume is changing at any given time because the water is filling at 2 cubic feet per second. So what we need is the rate of change of volume with respect to time. But we have variables here, r squared and h squared. If we assume that these are both themselves functions of time, we can implicit differentiate this function to get an equation for the rate of change of volume. So well, let's do exactly that. We got pi over 3 is equal to 2r r prime times h plus r squared h prime. So that's what we get if we implicit differentiate. You may be wondering to yourself, how do we know that the radius is a function of time and h is a function of time? Well, basically, if the water is at a height of, say, 3 feet, you have a different radius than if the water is at a height of 7 feet. So the radius has to be a function of time. And of course, if your height is changing from 3 feet to 7 feet, you must have had added a lot more water. It must have taken some time to do this. So we know that those are both functions of time. So now we have this equation for the rate of change of the volume, but we still have a lot of odd, odd variables here. We have r, we have r prime, we have h, we have h prime. What do we do with those? Well, let's substitute everything we can in first, and let's substitute r is equal to 2h, and then our v prime, which we know is equal to 2 cubic feet per second. So we get 2 equals pi over 3, times 4h r prime times h, which is h squared, plus 4h h prime. So that's a pretty good start, but now we have h, we have h prime, and we have r prime. What do we do now? Well, we have this the second equation. We have r of t is equal to 2 times h of t. So we can implicit differentiate this too to give us r prime equals 2 h prime and now substitute that into our equation. So this will give us 2 equals pi over 3 times 8 h squared h prime plus 4 h h prime. So now we have this equation here just in terms of h and h prime, we can separate this out to get h prime by itself. So this will give us, um, six over pi equals h prime, eight h squared plus four h. I'm going to switch this color cause I don't like it. And we can divide that through to get h prime is equal to 8 over pi 8h squared plus 4h. 
So now we have an equation of the rate of change of the height in terms of the existing height. And this makes sense, actually. If you had just, say, a little smidgen of water in the bottom of the cone, and you are adding a huge amount of volume to it, relatively speaking, that height is going to rise pretty quick. However, when you're very near the top of the cone, and you're adding, a, you know, turn on the garden hose or whatever, the height rises much slower. So if we say we want to find the rate of change of the height at the very bottom, when say h is equal to point, well, let's say h is equal to one foot. we would get h prime is equal to h over 8 pi plus 4 pi. And this would equal 8 over 12 pi or 2 over 3 pi. Now we can clear up a little bit of room here. And let's take the exact same example, but let's say let's find it when we're full, when height is equal to 10 feet. How, how fast is h prime going to change then? It's going to be equal to 8 over pi times 800 plus 40. So h prime is equal to 8 over 840 pi. Well, that's a really, really, really small number. especially compared to 2 divided by 3 pi. That's much bigger. So this mathematically has shown us exactly what we know logically is that when you're near the top of this cone, the rate of change of the height is going to be a lot slower than if you're at the bottom of the cone. And this is one of the most basic related rate problems that we can do. We can do a lot of very interesting ones, like the change of an angle as a rocket is flying up or people running around baseball fields the whole nine yards. There's a lot of problems like these are very useful all over physics and engineering, but there isn't any set way to go about them. Basically, you write down all the equations you can, you try to fit them to whatever variables you know, you implicit differentiate them, and you try to put the pieces together as best as possible. There's no algorithm, there's no formula to go about these. It's very similar to back in your early algebra classes where you had to solve trigonometric equations. You just had to deal with the equations you know and try to manipulate them and massage them into something that gives you an answer. So it takes a lot of intuition. It takes a lot of practice. you got to make sure you're good at your implicit differentiation. But once you start getting these problems, they're really interesting and a lot of fun. And you can actually apply them to very real situations.